Dang it. First of all, there's a couple things that need to be said. Number one, this is not going to be an engine overhaul best practices tutorial series. We're building a $100 engine. The second thing is, none of these parts just walked in off the highway and jumped on the shelf. These cost me money at some point. But over time, I either didn't have the heart to throw them away or they were too good to throw away. They went on the shelf. And the reason they did that was because I had a project like this in mind years ago when I started pulling engine parts out of my track car engine in between inspections. So a good example of that is what we have right here. This is an engine block that we pulled out of the parts car. And during the course of inspecting it and cleaning it and uh, generally looking at it to see what we have, we discovered that we had a problem with it. And you can see actually the repair I made. What we had prior to it was a crack that ran down through here, across here and down the back side. So this thing was actually loose. And you can see where it had fallen um, from a fairly significant height and it cracked it through here. So what I've done recently is actually welded that up. Here's the setup that we're going to use to stabilize the casting that's kind of hanging loose at this point. You can see that the crack is right there and I've taken a die grinder and I've beat that out and I've taken some 3 8 inch aluminum and drilled some holes in it and bolted that in three places and there's really no other way of doing this. Uh, that I could see without getting really, really complicated. So uh, I'm thinking that this is going to be good enough. We're going to go at this in stages, and um, hopefully this will work out because it's a good block otherwise. Not awful. We'll take a run at this side now. This aluminum to weld is not it's it's really really dirty but was able to get it done and i'm pretty happy with it now as far as cleaning the engine is concerned what we normally do is we take it into a shop that i have do this ordinarily and uh, have them put all the parts in their ultra supersonic parts washer and they come out looking like new and it costs about a hundred bucks but as you've heard already we're doing a hundred dollar overhaul so that blows the budget immediately. So what we did is a little bit different, something that I wanted to try before, and that was using Easy Off Oven Cleaner to clean an engine. Now this thing, on the outside, it was black. It was as dirty as I've ever seen an engine. And after we did the oven cleaner, that's what it looked like right there. And you, there is a bit of an issue with it. You can see that it sort of models the appearance of the aluminum, but it took that black crud and it was gone. Uh, the interior of the engine, same thing. We missed a few spots. Would have liked to have done it again, but time not permitting, we were kind of satisfied with it the way it is. We had to actually touch up some stuff by hand inside of the engine spots that uh, that the cleaner and the parts or the pressure washer didn't get to but you can see that on the outside and on the inside of the engine that's more than adequate and what i did once we got everything cleaned up and also did a little bit of deburring down in the uh, engine because there's a fair amount of of uh, casting flash on it at that point. I then put it in the trunk of my car, took it over to the local car wash and did a final clean on it. And we are ready to start putting parts in this thing. And here's some of the parts that we're gonna be putting in that engine block. What we're looking at here is the bearings, both mains and connecting rods pistons, and the rings. Now, 
During the course of my experimentation with the lubrication cooling system modification on the XJS track car, I had the engine apart three or four times, and when you've got an, a V12 engine apart, you're not going to stick it back together with the used parts. It's not that expensive to buy rings and bearings and gaskets. You can do it all for less than $1,000. But the fact is that some of these parts didn't have any more than 30, 40, 50 hours on them and they just look too good to throw away. So I hung on to them. And what we've got here is, first of all, the bearings. This is probably the best set that I had. And one of the things that we do here is coating of bearings and pistons. And you can see that it's not the normal, sort of a light gray material. Uh, what you see here is the the sort of a, a satin black dry film lubricant that I shoot on bearings. And the reason that you do that is because these engines don't run that often. They're not started very often. So a lot of times these engines start up dry. So what a dry film lubricant will do for you is in the absence of oil, this thing or this film will actually uh, provide that lubrication for that instantaneous uh, lack of oil feed that you get when you first start the engine up. Also, you know, if you're braking really hard and cornering really hard uh, on a, in a track day or some other high performance environment, the oil can go away from the pickup and you can get a momentary interruption of lubrication of the bearings. And that's another situation where where these uh, dry film lubricant films actually um, can save a bearing. On the pistons, you can see that first of all, we've got sort of a gold color on the top of the piston. And this particular coating is a, uh, is a ceramic coating that not only repels heat, but also serves to shed carbon as time goes by and the engine will, these pistons in the V12s do tend to pick up a fair amount of carbon over time. You can see also that the same dry film lubricant has been applied to the pistons, piston skirt as well. And that's a process that we're going to be going through in another video sometime in the future. It's a relatively easy thing to do and in my opinion it pays it pays dividends to have this done, again, because these engines spend long periods of time not running and all the oil drains off. Another side benefit that the, uh, the dry film lubricant has is that the film is about five ten thousandths of an inch thick, which means that it will actually close up the bearing clearance by about a thousandth of an inch. That's not why you do it, but it's sort of a side benefit. And in the case where we're putting together a used engine with used parts, that's probably a good thing. What we have here is the rings. I'm not going to take them out of the bag. Everybody kind of knows what rings look like. These uh, are going to be reusable. Again, they're low time parts. They probably didn't spend more than 40 or 50 hours inside of the engine. But when I order my rings, typically, I will order them 10 thousandths oversize, and that gives me plenty of material to adjust end gap with. Also gives it a little more, a little more cylinder wall tension. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is taking these used 10 thousandths oversized rings, and, which actually were in, a, in an engine that had 10 thousandths oversize pistons in it. And what that will do is enable me to take those rings, which were adjusted or, or ground for a 10 thousandths oversized cylinder bore, and enable me to use it in a standard bore. And uh, so in addition to that, as far as gaskets are concerned, We've got a set of head gaskets around here that I bought on eBay a while ago, and they came in pretty dinged up, and I, have, uh, I haven't been real confident in putting them in an engine, uh, but sounds like a candidate for this one. 
Now, if you look over here, you can see the cylinder heads. And these have not been cleaned yet, but these look like they have been reconditioned um, fairly recently, uh, though you can't tell by the, the, uh, the oil and grease all over it. Somebody's taken some time to actually do a uh, rudimentary job of porting on the intakes. Uh, won't know how good these are until we actually get them apart and, are, and uh, actually start measuring things. But uh, I'm hopeful that these will actually prove to be the heads that we need for this project. Time to get busy.